Well, really good news about underwater grasses this year. The um, uh, annual survey from 2015, the results just came in, uh, and they showed a 21% increase in uh, bay grasses over the year before. It means the abundance of this very important um, type of plant that provides critical habitat for aquatic organisms uh, is up by 21% um, and uh, takes us almost to 50% of the long-term goal of the Chesapeake Bay program. The grasses are down historically, primarily because of nitrogen and phosphorus and sediment pollution in the bay that um, clouds the water and uh, by shading the plants, preventing uh, sunlight from getting down to them, it, uh, it has led to the decline of grasses by historically as much as 80% uh, or more. Uh, and that's what we're recovering from now. So uh, the recovery is most likely in large part the result of improved water clarity, letting more sunlight through. Uh, and so that's probably uh, probably due to um, a reduction in the nitrogen and phosphorus and sediment getting into the bay in 2015 and to some extent maybe even the year before. The uh, winter survey of blue crabs that just came out also had some good news. Uh, each category of, of crab, adult males, females and juveniles, uh, were up. Blue crabs are maybe the best example of one of our species that uh, depends heavily on grasses. Uh, it certainly uh, is an important species economically uh, and a big part of the bay uh, ecosystem, bay food web as well. And uh, they depend heavily on bay grasses. Uh, when they're juveniles, they, uh, they need bay grass habitat to hide from predators. And even as adults, when they're shedding their shell, um, to grow uh, and going through the soft crab stage when they're very vulnerable. So we need to continue to reduce those pollutants uh, and uh, if we persist in uh, implementing the Chesapeake Clean Water Blueprint that will do exactly that and we'll see this critical habitat rebound to the target level.